Thank you for joining us for the Ranked Choice Voting Resource Center's 2019 Symposium, Building a Solid Foundation, the sixth and final session. So who won? Tabulate, or excuse me, software for tabulating and displaying results for Ranked Choice Voting will begin shortly. My name is Karen Brinson Bell. I am the Deputy Director of the Ranked Choice Voting Resource Center. I will be your moderator for this session. A few housekeeping matters are needed before we get started. Participants have been muted for this webinar to reduce audio interference since we have a large number of attendees. If you have technical issues, please use the question option to send a message to the organizers so we may try to assist. If you have a question or comment regarding the session, please type that message in the question box. Session six will be about 45 minutes, followed by a brief question and answer period. Questions we are unable to address during this live session will be answered in a follow-up document, which we will email to attendees and also post with a recording of the session on the Ranked Choice Voting Resource Center's website within a couple of weeks of the symposium. For those who are not familiar with the Ranked Choice Voting Resource Center, we provide a compilation of best practices and first-hand experiences from jurisdictions that have used this voting method with a focus on election administration, since that is our background. The website, rankedchoicevoting.org, and our other resources have been developed as educational tools for election administrators, policymakers, voters, candidates, and others. The Resource Center continues to evolve, as does Ranked Choice Voting. Both are building a solid foundation, and we hope these resources and sessions help you and others improve our democracy and the conduct of elections. Our panelists for session six have developed groundbreaking software to calculate RCV election results and display those results in a clear way to the public. I'll introduce them in the order they're presenting. Lewis Eisenberg is a software engineering manager at the Chan Zuckerberg Initiative, where he works on a team developing education technology to deliver personalized learning to schools around the country. He's also part of Bright Spots, a small group of friends based in the San Francisco Bay Area who have united over their shared commitment to supporting both shorter term progressive causes and longer term nonpartisan democratic reforms. They identify promising organizations aligned with their values and then seek to amplify the impact of those organizations by contributing financial support or engaging in pro bono pro bono specialized projects. Lewis and his Bright Spots friends have worked tirelessly with the Ranked Choice Voting Resource Center to develop open source universal RCV tabulation software. JP Heisel is a business intelligence developer on the city of Minneapolis's data and analytics services team. He develops portions of the city's business intelligence infrastructure consults on data supply chains, builds visualizations, develops proof of concept for a variety of data oriented solutions and conducts civic data research. JP also enjoys cooking and playing board games in his free time. From 1988 to 2013, George Gilbert served as director of elections for Guilford County, North Carolina a jurisdiction with over 360,000 registered voters, including the cities of Greensboro and High Point. During his tenure, George administered over 65 elections, including seven presidentials. George was a nationally recognized CIRA, which is the Certified Election Registration Administrator through the Center, uh, excuse me, through the Election Center and served on and co-chaired multiple committees tasked with improving election administration across the country. He also participated in the Election Assistant Commission's working groups in the development of best practices publications and served on the North Carolina Uniformity Standards Working Group also. 
Please welcome these folks as they walk us through their RCV software. And we'll begin with Lewis. The three engineers from Bright Spots who has been working on uh, the Universal Tabulator project for the last couple of years. The others are John Moldover and Hilton Eddingfield. All three of us are software engineers in our day jobs. And we got connected to this project originally through Fairvote. Uh, the goal of the Universal Tabulator is to bridge the gap for jurisdictions who are interested in implementing ranked choice voting but might not have the technological solutions necessary to actually tabulate the results of a, a ranked choice voting election. And so our goal with this, this application is to serve as a, a universal tabulator where we can take input from any voting machine that can produce ranked choice cast vote records and then produce an output that can be consumable by other software or displayed to the public. And so we've implemented it as a Java desktop application and I'm going to walk you through some of the features of the software. So you, you can see on my screen now I have this application open and I've loaded a sample configuration file, which is for the Democratic primary for the governor's race in Maine last year. Um, so there's basic configuration options for where the output should go, whether we want to tabulate by precinct, you specify one or more cast vote records that you want to read from, you list the candidates, and then the most interesting tab here is all these rules. And so our goal is there are many different local variations on ranked choice voting and the particulars of how the tabulation should operate, and we want to support all those variations within reason. And so things like how should ties be broken, what happens if there's an overvote, how many winners are there, and so on. And I'm happy to answer more questions about this later. Okay, so once you have your configuration the way you want, you tabulate it. This should run in about 10 seconds. And so it's reading in this Excel file, uh, which I'll quickly show you here. So this, this is the Excel file with all the cash flow records from Maine last year. Okay, so the tabulation just finished. And Scrolling back up here through the output, you can see that it processed about 130,000 votes. So now that it's run, it generated various output files. Um, one of the more interesting ones is the summary file. And so it's just showing you round by round what happened at a high level. So which candidates were eliminated in each round and then how the vote shifted. So you can see the eventual winner started with about 40,000 votes and then went to 44,000 about 50,000 and then finally ended with 63,000. So there are other output files that we produce as a result. Um, this is our audit log. And so it shows for each individual cash vote record exactly what happened to it in each round. If you want to you know, check whether the, the tabulation made any mistakes. And then we also produce this summary file in JSON format and the reason this is useful is because there's a separate project going on that will read these JSON files and then display them in a graphical format. And so this is still very much a work in progress, but just to show you quickly, what happens when you load it is it produces the Sankey diagram where you can see the flow of the votes round by round as you scroll down. Okay. And then I also quickly wanna show you Another example of a, a multi-winner race. So in this case, we set the number of winners to three and if we run it, this is just a test set. So there are only a, a handful of, of cash vote records. But in this case, we see that candidate C was elected and then candidates A and B were elected in a later round. Um, I also want to mention that we've recently started working to support a common data format that will uh, allow the, the software to work with, with other software in the future. Um, this is a common data format proposed by the, the VVSG. 
and this is approximately what it's going to look like. So this is a, a cash vote record snapshot where it shows for each cash vote record how um, the candidates were ranked. And that's it for my part. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is JP Heisel. I'm a member of the Data and Analytics Services team in the Information Technology Department at the City of Minneapolis. And today we're talking about visualizing ranked choice voting. The main question to focus on today is how to visualize ranked choice voting. And again, we will use the 2017 City of Minneapolis municipal elections as our vehicle. To get to the punchline, this is the Sankey diagram that we will focus on. We'll talk about who was involved in making this and the tools involved to create this solution. All right, here's the outline for today. Again, within the context of the 2017 elections, we'll talk about the team involved. The vision for answering the question, the vision for visualizing the results of a ranked choice voting election. We'll talk about the tools, we'll talk about the results. Want to make sure to call it the process uh, that led to the creation of the visualization and of course reflect on what was created and how it can be made better for future use. A reminder again we're talking about this Sankey diagram. Okay the team. First and foremost Grace Wachlerowitz is one of our assistant city clerks and is the director of elections and voter services at the city of Minneapolis. Grace ran the whole election and recruited us to contribute the visualization for the elections. Christian Remelhoff is also an assistant city clerk and the director of records and information management. Christian helped us parse in fine detail the rules for tabulation. Grant Johnson helped embed the visualizations on their website. Mitch Camp ran the Twitter handle that promoted the results of the election and the visualization. Rick Paulson and I are teammates and work together to craft these visualizations. Errol Kilkson is our boss and Beth Cousins is the chief information officer. Beth and Arrow had the vision to create our team. Our team is a, an internal data consultancy to the city's departments. We also build city data infrastructure and so when folks are interested in working with data, we often get recruited, and that is what happened here. Again, talking about the vision, Grace came to us, invited us to help visualize the results of the election. There were two main points. The first were, was that folks were interested in knowing what happened round by round. Grace did some market research and came back to us and asked for round by round. I'm gonna jump now to our website, and I will show the Tableau visualization that we did. So we have a Tableau enterprise license and we create visualizations and publish them to the web. This is a round by round progression of total votes. You'll see the candidates listed here, the office up here, the round, and this was a single seat up for election. We had it so that you progress through by clicking. The blue are the votes the candidate had the previous round. The orange are the number of votes they picked up this round. Total votes, new votes, exhausted votes down here, eliminated candidates. And we did this for every race, mayor, city council, and others. Again, clicking through, you see how round by round total votes change. The second thing Grace asked us for was folks were really interested in when a candidate gets eliminated, where do their votes go? How do the votes get distributed to the remaining candidates? And that's what we're gonna focus on again today. And I'm gonna click out to this here. We're gonna go out and take a look. 
This tool, if you hover, will show in a tooltip the total number of votes on a particular bar. And then if you hover on a link, will show the number of votes that go from one candidate to the other. You can also rearrange vertically within an individual round where the candidates are located in case it helps with your consumption. Folks seem to really enjoy how votes went from one candidate to another. We got a lot of positive feedback that this helped tell the story of where candidates' votes went. Okay. Let's talk about the tools. If you are, if you work at a city or at a, at a government office, a place that is interested in visualizing, uh, all the tools we use to make the Sankey diagram are, are open source. They're free, and we're going to progress through them here. We started with our data file that had each individual ballot. And the key part in creating the Sankey diagram was that each ballot's progression needed to be tracked. In other words, if in round one, the ballot is assigned to a particular candidate and then that candidate gets eliminated, how does that ballot then get reassigned? We built our tabulation engine in Python, and let me be very clear, this was only for visualization purposes. Uh, as I'll touch on later, the official tabulation happened uh, with different tools. This that we're talking about today was just for the purposes of visualization. So we waited until after all tabulation was complete and then ran the data file through our tabulator. We wrote it in Python. We, while tabulating, wrote code on the fly for the network D3 package in R, used R Studio to pop open a new window that had HTML and JavaScript so that we could embed that in our website. At the time, we did zero coding in HTML and JavaScript. We just took what our studio popped out for us and embedded it in our website. And that's what I showed you earlier today. Two links at the very bottom of this page is a little bit more detail connecting you to these tools. If you, what didn't get fully called out was this network D3 package. I'm going to go there now to show you its page. This is the landing page for the network D3 package. If you scroll down, you'll see the different types of visualizations you can make. This one I find particularly interesting. It, you click and drag and move it around, all from code that is about this short. Um, and down here is the Sankey code. This is a little bit more noisy. I want to make sure to give props to this network D3 package. It was crucial in the creation of our solution. Okay, so this is this is the main page. If you're looking to reproduce something like this, I would I'd direct your attention here. Happy to take questions about this at the end. Thanks to some of the, the team in the clerk's office, our partners in the clerk's office, that we received a lot of positive attention. Uh, Twitter, a lot of good uh, sharing. Uh, a lot of folks were referencing the visualization and giving good feedback about it. Our local newspaper embedded st you know, straight links to the page, the tabulation page. So they were, we were obviously tickled by that. That was good communication of the information. And then uh, the whole election, if you haven't had a chance, I encourage you to follow the whole 2017 city of Minneapolis election uh, on Twitter. It, it, it was a fairly entertaining process to be a part of. Speaking of that process, uh, our team, the data and analytics team, we partner with, with city departments, and we were partners with the city clerk's office in this endeavor. And as I mentioned, first, they tabulated the results for races, and only then, after they were completed, uh, completed the tabulation, did we get involved to visualize the results. They embedded the visuals, and then they tweeted about it. In the future, we hope to enhance the user experience, focusing a little bit more on human-centered design, doing a few test cases. What parts of the visualizations do people like? Do they dislike? 
for example, color matching, uh, matching the color of the links to the color of the nodes, the bars, so that folks can maybe more easily track how votes progress. We had zero considerations for the mobile experience, and that's something we could, would consider doing in the future. It's something we do, I should say, we did have mobile considerations for the Tableau, for like the bar graph progressions. We did not for the Sankey, and so perhaps we would like to do that in the future. We could certainly open source the code, find more ways to share for reproducibility. We could do Sankey visualizations for all the races. We could show the most or least popular progressions of votes or bundles of preferences. For example, if a lot of voters liked candidate A, but once candidate A got eliminated, they went to candidate E, and so on and so forth, to show those as some sub-tenants of the races. And then do a better job with a thank you diagram of communicating where exhausted ballots go. Okay. Happy to answer any questions. Thank you very much for having me. Uh, I will uh, pass it over now and then re return for questions. Okay, good afternoon. I'm George Gilbert. And uh, as was noted at the beginning, I uh, am a retired election official uh, from North Carolina, although recently I have not felt very retired. Looking forward to getting back to that status. I'd just like to cover today uh, what is largely a summary of what the vendors um, presented to us last year during our symposium. We had uh, representatives from Dominion, ES&S, Hart, InterCivic, and Unison uh, who presented last year each of their um, RCV capabilities. And not much has changed since then, but I'm sure for some of you were probably not uh, involved in those sessions. So just a brief summary today, we'll bring you up to speed on uh, on what they have done. Uh, I think the most significant thing is that two of those vendors, that is Dominion and es and &S, have actually used their RCV systems to successfully execute RCV elections uh, in 2018. Uh, Dominion in uh, Santa Fe, New Mexico, and ESNS in the state of Maine, both in their primary last summer and in their fall election in November. So looking at Dominion, uh, they have a built-in RCV tabulation system now in their democracy suite software. I think uh, version 5.2 is the most comprehensive uh, version that they have with their RCV software, they can produce a ballot that includes both RCV and non-RCV contest on the same ballot. They allow up to 10 rankings and use a grid style for their uh, optical scan ballots. Uh, they, uh, interestingly, I think, use a numerical ranking for their touchscreen based system uh, in their ballot marking devices. So they would rank the, the candidates one, two, three uh, using their touchscreen systems. Um, their voting equipment automatically uploads uh, the RCV cast vote records right along with all the rest of their contest data. And they have built-in software, um, which the user can select to run the RCV algorithm to generate real-time results for both single winner or multi-winner RCV. Uh, and this system continually updates the results as the additional ballot data is added to the system. Uh, they have reports available on a round-by-round -round basis for both district and or precinct, uh, as well as the overall election results. Election systems and software. Uh, there is a electionware software and any uh, compatible equipment uh, is capable of designing ES, uh, RCV ballots, capturing the output, and executing the tabulation. And the tabulation capability right now, as you'll see in a minute, is single winner only. Uh, they also can produce uh, ballots with ranked choice voting and non-ranked choice voting contests on the same ballot. Uh, and they're capable of doing that on any size ballot that they use. They use a grid or column design. Uh, 
and they can do it on the 11, 14, 17, or 19 inch ballots. What they do is they export their cast vote records and then the tabulation takes place in a separate module that the company has developed for called Express Runoff. And Express Runoff is currently limited to single winner RCV. However, we are working with, we, I say we, the Ranked Choice Voting Resource Center is working with ES&S and this summer, uh, the plan is to uh, test and have certified the uh, tabulator that Lewis demonstrated for you um, to work with the election where generated uh, cast vote record results to do their multi-winner uh, RCV tabulation since we already have that built in. The ESNS reports are capable of showing the round by round tabulation and they export that uh, tabulation in Excel format. Now hard and acidic. Uh, they, their system, their Verity system, which is their latest version, can be used to create and record ballots with RCV contest. Um, they can process their, all the selections and, the, and generate the cast vote records for RCV along with uh, any other type of election contest. The user can select their ballot design specification, set up the voting logic, and it includes a selection for ranked choice voting. So you can do either one, uh, either the RCV or the non-RCV contests on the same ballot. Their heart system uh, allows up to six rankings in a ranked choice voting contest. At this time, Verity does not offer full RCV tabulation. Uh, the system does provide vote tabulation for the first round of RCV contest, uh, which is your basic, you know, first choice votes is what they, they currently have. Uh, subsequent rounds have to be tabulated either by third party software, such as ours, uh, or you can contract if you're a heart user, you can contract with Heart and Civic, and they will create the, uh, the algorithms necessary to tabulate your elections uh, according to the rules that you employ locally. Unison, interestingly, was the first integrated RCV certified voting system uh, back in January of 2010. Their open elect system uh, had that capability and was tested and certified by the EAC nine years ago. Uh, it allows up to three rankings and they use a grid style ballot. Again, both RCV and non-RCV contests can be placed on the same ballot. Um, the vote data is collected, cast vote records are uploaded to their tally system, and the tally system allows the officials to select the rules for invalid rankings and tie breakings, much as you saw in our software uh, that Lewis showed you a little while ago. Uh, their current capability is to tabulate single winner contests, but their multi-winner contest development is underway. So. There are other vendors uh, that we have been in communication with uh, whose systems are used in US jurisdictions, uh, including ClearBallot, MicroVote, and Smartmatic. Uh, ClearBallot currently uh, is capable of generating and exporting uh, their vote data uh, for third-party tabulation. However, the company intends to and would prefer to develop their own end-to-end uh, RCV process with a partner jurisdiction. So if any of you are uh, working with uh, clear ballot and interested in ranked choice voting, you would make a good candidate for that. Uh, Microvote currently does not have built in RCV tabulation, but they are also receptive to working uh, with any of their customers uh, or any new customer on developing that capability. Uh, Smartmatic likewise uh, has had discussions with the Ranked Choice Voting Resource Center uh, about, you know, working together with us to develop ballot design and tabulation procedures. So for those of you who have legacy voting equipment, that's really why, how we got started. That's how we started developing uh, the Ranked Choice Voting uh, tabulator is that we knew that there were most people out there had legacy voting systems that did not have standard RCV 
uh, capabilities, but many of those systems had the ability to lay out uh, a ballot and to capture the vote totals and export those vote totals in a digital cast vote record. And if your legacy system is capable of doing that, if capable of generating a full cast vote record for all ballots, um, we would be happy to work with you to convert your data into a compatible format. Uh, what Lewis showed you earlier with respect to the common data format, uh, at this point we have converted um, ESNS data, their export files, uh, into the common data format and are capable of running that data in either Excel format or in the common data format. And we would be happy to do the same uh, for any of the other vendors equipment. So if you have files that you want us to convert and test, uh, just get in touch with us and we will be happy to do that. And with that, I think we'll have plenty of time for questions for all three of us. Yes, thank you all three. Um, hopefully that's given our audience a perspective on the different aspects that are taking place within the voting systems community, the tabulation community, and visualization, obviously. Um, I'm going to start with a question that I think would go to you, George, and we do have a good number of questions, and I'm glad we've got the extra time to go through these. Uh, George, as the Election Assistance Commission updates the voting system guidelines, can we expect to see requirements for tabulating RCV? Where, where are we with that? Uh, yes. There will be RCV uh, standards in the new version of the VVSG. Uh, that's something that Chris and I have been working with the voting method subgroup uh, in the NIST for the last three years uh, was in developing those specifications and, uh, you know, working with other people around the country and making sure that, uh, that we got it right and included all of the various alternatives uh, that people use uh, in the jurisdictions in the United States that currently use ranked choice voting. So everything should be included in the next version of the VVSG. Great, that is a big advancement. Um, the next question that we have, I'll, I'll actually just go ahead and answer it and turn it into a slightly different question. And it's whether the universal RCV tabulator is available to the public uh, and can we provide a link? We will provide the link um, with our post web post symposium recording and Q&A document. It is out on our website currently, but we'll make sure there's a specific link available in that document. Uh, if I could turn to Lewis, can you talk a little bit, Lewis, about uh, how um, the public can use it, what that interface is like. I think Chris is, is pulling that up right now where it is on our website. Um, but is how, where are we in terms of the public's use of it? Yeah, so it's it's available as an open source project on Git, GitHub. Uh, and so anyone can download it and build it themselves and run it. Um, it's constantly changing and we haven't create a formal release process yet. And so it's used at your own risk, but usually it, it works. <laughs> um, and then we also occasionally post a compiled version that we know to be relatively stable. And I believe uh, on your website, there's a link to a compiled version, but I don't remember for sure. I believe so. We'll double check that. Um, since Chris is showing all this, I'll lean on him. If you have and I would like to add, Karen, that yeah. you know, if if you are interested in uh, exploring the use of this tabulator, do not hesitate to give me a call or get in touch with us, uh, and we will be happy to try to support that uh, that effort. That was actually going to be one of my questions, George, because um, <laughs> it, it, you know, I think to just glancing at it, you know. How techy do you have to be to understand how to use it? it and um, right. I could do it, so you don't have to be all that smart. <laughs> I was setting you up for that, George. Thanks. Yeah. 
So, did I hear yeah, Lewis? Chris, you Chris hadn't been able to get it to work here lately, so I don't know about him. Oh, yeah, I was just going to say, you have to install Java 10 on your computer, which can be a little bit tricky, but once you have that, you should be able to just download the latest release, which Chris showed the folder for, and then double click on the jar file, and it should open that graphical interface that I was demoing earlier. Right. And again, we'll be happy to support an individual or organization that wants to make use of it. Um, and it is an evolving process. So I think you'll continue to see improvements and, and changes in the user interface and so forth from what I'm hearing. Um, I'm gonna go to the next question and um, let's see. Uh, JP, this would be towards you. It actually came in before you had done your future slide. And in your future slide, you mentioned needing to consider exhausted ballots with the Sinky diagram. Have y'all given any thoughts to that of how you would display such a thing or is it still too soon? That's a good question. Uh, if I understand the question correctly, which is how do you show how does one show sank, uh, exhausted ballots and Sankey diagrams? It would be equivalent to adding each round a, a candidate, in the, and that candidate would be the exhausted candidate, so to speak. Uh, when, when in the technical coding, instead of a candidate with a, a certain number of votes, it would be exhausted ballots and the number of ballots. So it would be a in the in the realm of a technical solution, a very small technical solution adjustment. Okay. And I'll, I think yeah. I think Karen, if I can make a comment on that, I think this is an important concept because uh, one of the things that happens in ranked choice voting is that people accuse people say that exhausted ballots are thrown away, uh, and that is not the case. And I think that that's a challenge that we all face is that how do we display exhausted ballots so that they are understood by the public? Uh, that's a that's a, an issue that we have not resolved yet, but we're working on it and would certainly welcome any ideas that people have uh, along those lines because every ballot is counted in a ranked choice voting election, just as every ballot is counted, every ballot ballot is counted in any other election. Uh, and being able to visualize that is a real challenge. I'm glad you stated that, George. I know that that came up even in the work we were doing with the Center for Civic Design. Um, even though they didn't use the same type of diagram, it's it's mm -hmm. how do you how do you give visualization to that? Um, so certainly on the radar in many efforts uh, to give good visualization to ranked choice results. Um, I'm, I'll just put this one out in general. How can the public verify tabulation without being present is the question. That is, are all the same records used by the official software tabulation tools available for remote watchdogs to independently verify the tabulation offsite at a later time? And if not, how can the official count be independently verified? Well, I'll be happy to start with that because we've done it oh, in numerous occasions. Oh. For those jurisdictions that actually publish their cast vote records, and I will say that uh, Minneapolis does so, uh, and the state of Maine did so, uh, San Francisco also does so. Uh, I believe that Santa Fe did so, and some of the other jurisdictions may. Um, but since we at this point have only converted the ESNS data, uh, our ability to to verify those results uh, with our uh, RCV tabulator. It's been limited to Minneapolis and to Maine, both of whom use ESNS. Uh, and basically, we simply took the data that, uh, that Minneapolis and Maine made available on the website. We downloaded their entire cast vote record and ran it through the tabulator and came up with the exact same results that they did. Uh, I know that the same thing has been done in San Francisco. There are a number of people out there who have developed their own uh, tabulation software expressly for the San Francisco 
uh, RCV elections. And that's one of the things, though not all states, not all jurisdictions make the cast vote record publicly available. And I think that's an important feature, whether you're talking about ranked choice voting or whether you're talking about any elections, uh, that those cast vote records need to be and have to be made available publicly in order for any elections to be verified independently. You're actually touching on what came up in a sort of a additional question that I, I didn't throw out there because I knew it was a, a, a follow up. The cast vote records versus ballot images. Right. That certainly creates a difference in public records requests and what's publicly available. Uh, how does that get resolved? Well, the cast vote record is a data file and there's no uh, no identification of voters in a cast vote record. Uh, so the, you know, the, the privacy of the ballot uh, and the anonymity of every ballot is preserved. Uh, a ballot image is sometimes, and I think usually can refer, refers to a, a digitized image of the ballot itself. If you're dealing with, say, a paper ballot, uh, it would just be a digitized image of that ballot. Um, and that's not what we're working with here. What we're working with and what people need in order to verify election results um, is the, the ballot, um, the data file or the cast vote record. So ballot images are what are needed in order to execute uh, automated audits and things like that. Uh, they facilitate auditing capabilities, but they are not uh, what we would use for a tabulation verification. Great. Some of the other questions are very specific to the different uh, voting systems. So if I hope the audience will understand that what we're going to do with those is to uh, address those in our post webinar post symposium Q&A document and we actually have a summary sheet that we have recently updated and had reviewed with the voting system vendors to make sure that we are accurately uh, conveying the information of what their systems are capable of. So we will touch on some of those more specific questions uh, in that follow-up and make sure that that's sent along to you whenever we do the post Q&A document in the recordings. Uh, I think I will touch on one just because it needed some clarification since this is part of the recording. Uh, George alluded to Dominion and which version of the software. And I think that there was just a, a misunderstanding. It, it Beginning with 5.2 and now Dominion's further along with their, ver uh, their uh, I'm drawing a blank. The, what's the system called? I'm sorry. Democracy Suite. There we go. Democracy, democracy Suite. suite. Right. Uh, there are other levels of Democracy so, Suite. So it began with 5.2, and since 5.2, they have had RCV capabilities, and I believe they're at 5.5 now. So just to clarify oh. that point, but the other specific things about some of the other systems, or even Dominion, we'll try to address uh, post Q&A. Um, well, here's an interesting question that just came in. Has the Resource Center or Bright Spots or Minneapolis, any of us, has it been considered an animating tool that would, and they put this in, in quotations, cartoon the round counts and exhaust ballot status as a better visualization process? So maybe talk with us about the ideas behind the different ways that y'all have envisioned having visualization of the results. Take it, JP. <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. That's something we uh, I, I left off a slide and I should have mentioned. Thank you for that reminder. Yeah, progressing from uh, from round to round, showing perhaps at a uh, a more detailed ballot level uh, view how things progress might be helpful. Um, consuming it all at once can be a, a bit much, and that's a good point. That's some good feedback for what we were talking about. Um, and and to follow up and and to tie this into the previous question about where do exhausted ballots go, show along the bottom uh, that all the, all the ballots that funnel off as they go and maybe even uh, demonstrate, you know, an example ballot showing that, you know, it moved all the way through the tabulation process and 
the next preference is no longer uh, or has already been eliminated, so that ballot is not moving forward as part of the the totals. Uh, that type of feedback like we could or that type of uh, animation we could see being very helpful. I think that's a good idea. It's a great concept. Uh, also, would like to mention that just in terms of terminology. Um, we have struggled also with the terminology of ranked choice voting, uh, some of which is somewhat confusing, and the, the name exhausted ballot itself um, is somewhat misleading. Uh, and it certainly has negative connotations. It's not negative, it's neutral. It's the, the voter voted for everyone that they wanted to in general, and, uh, and they didn't win. Um, and so uh, that's just like that happens in every election is voters vote for who they want to and most of them don't win. So uh, what we have, uh, one of the tacks that we have uh, taken is that we talk about a ballot being exhausted, but the category that we are going to use in our ranked choice voting resource center tabulator uh, is that those ballots will be labeled as inactive uh, once they have been exhausted. So little things like that that hopefully will help clarify what the phenomenon is of exhausting or inactive ballots. I think that's a good distinction. Uh, actually, a question that does give some other distinction, especially for jurisdictions that may not have a team like JP was part of or is part of in Minneapolis, where what kind of what tools can be visualization tools? And then what has to happen just with election night results? Are you proposing that these be one and the same? Or are you suggesting that this be, you know, there still be election night results reporting and then the visualization be an additional tool? That's for any of you. This is, this is JP. That's a good question. And that is a, that is a, a great point. There are uh, resource constraints there are challenges. Um, we, whatever, whatever, uh, using whatever we have at our disposal is is something we always have to do. Technologically speaking, the uh, there are, there are technologies and tools, so many of them in, in organizations, and, and many of them do have visualization uh, capacities. Collaborating, you know, uh, we we are happy to share what we used uh, for the Sankey. It was all f uh, free from a tool procurement standpoint. Uh, yes, we also use Tableau and pay for that. I would imagine that you know, whether in in Excel, uh, you know, the tools are are catching up to shall we call it data storytelling capacities, and so there there are probably tools in house that work and uh, may require some outside collaboration to to pull that out. Um, it is a challenge, it's understood, uh, and as I mentioned, sharing our work is something we're happy to do and happy to, at, at a minimum, get on a phone call and collaborate uh, with and have a kind of a workshop conversing about what tools are available and how we can, how things can be visualized. Uh, I'll, I'll just say there, first, oh sorry, go ahead. If there are specific questions about trying to implement that, which uh, we did here in Minneapolis, we'd be, again, happy to to direct you there and maybe even share some code. Go, take, go ahead, Liz. I was just going to say that for the work we're doing through the RCV Resource Center, our hope is that we can provide both the official tabulator, which generates results that can be certified, and then also I, I demoed that visualizer, visualizer website, and the output from the tabulator can be used to generate a visualization um, for a public facing display that is more user friendly and would be unofficial. Um, so we do hope to provide both solutions so that uh, a jurisdiction that doesn't have their own tech team wouldn't have to scrape together their own tools. And if I might mention the fact that as we talked earlier and, and Lewis demonstrated the, the common data format, uh, the next generation of voting system standards is going to require that all voting systems produce um, their outputs in a common data format. And one of the main reasons for that is so that you can interchange tools. 
if we produce a file in the common data format, you can take that file and if JP, which I think they will eventually, uh, convert their tools, their visualizer to, to read the common data format, you'd be able to take our output, read it into to JP's visualizer, and you, you would have what you need. Or you could take the output from any voting system that you use and read it into our visualizer. And it would be able to read that output and create uh, the visualizer that you choose to, to use. So I think looking ahead, uh, there are going to be uh, a lot more, there's gonna be a lot more flexibility built into voting systems to be able to use interchangeable parts and interchangeable files. That's great. Um... I've got one more question. It's not necessarily the last in order of when they happen, uh, but it, I'm combining two questions because they dealt with two different states. And the two different states do not have the same certification requirements, but they do require voting systems and components to either be certified by the state or certified at the EAC level. Where does Where do these visualization tools, where does the universal RCV tabulator, where do those fit in, in terms of meeting certification requirements for a particular, if, especially if it's at a state level that doesn't require EAC? Well, we are getting ready to take our tabulator to one of the voting system testing labs that is approved by the EAC um, and have it certified as to meeting all of the relevant VVSG standards. Now the, the distinction there, and we and we would, you know, I mean, certainly if if someone wanted to use it at a a state level, uh, we would try to work with them and, and figure out a way to to have that um, have our software tested at the state level, uh, so that it could be certified by the state too. Uh, part of that is uh, part of my hesitation there is the expense of state certification varies widely. In some states, uh, it's it's not highly rigorous. In other states, it is very rigorous and expensive. Uh, but once we have gone through the certification process with one of the voting system testing labs that's certified by the EAC, I think we'll have a lot stronger foundation to be able to approach states and local jurisdictions uh, with a certified product. Now, the EAC does not certify modules at this point. The EAC only certifies complete voting systems. And so the EAC is not in a position at this point to certify our tabulator. However, in the future, under the new VVSG standards, one of the ideas behind those standards uh, is modular voting system construction. And the EAC probably will move toward certification of voting system modules, which would include tabulators, visualizers, because there's a whole section of the new VVSG on reporting standards uh, in, as, as separate and apart from tabulation standards. So the situation is going to be different in the future. Right now, we are, we are limited to being able to get uh, certification from a testing lab that we meet the relevant standards. And hopefully, states and local jurisdictions will accept that uh, as being adequate certification. Thank you, George. I think that really addressed both questions without you seeing both questions, so I appreciate it. And with that, I'm going to just say thank you, George, Lewis, and JP. We really value your contribution and all the work that you're doing uh, in this area of ranked choice voting. And we certainly thank our attendees and definitely the questions. Uh, this is a great set of questions that have come in and we're gonna have some homework to do uh, just to get all of them answered because we did not have time to do all of them today. Uh, we do thank all the attendees for, a jo for joining us for session six of the RCB symposium and we will work with our panelists to get the answers to your questions. Uh, 
This document will be posted with our recording in the coming weeks on our website, which is rankedchoicevoting.org. This concludes the final session of the 2019 RCV Symposium. Whether you attended just one session or multiple sessions, we hope this symposium helped you build a solid foundation about ranked choice voting in whatever role you may have pertaining to this voting method. On behalf of my colleagues at the Ranked Choice Voting Resource Center, we thank you and we hope that you have a great evening. <music>